What is up, Mets fans? Welcome back to a special episode of the Mets Sub Podcast. It's not just me and James on the couch by ourselves this time. We are joined by our friends from the UK. Well, two of them are. We've got Chris, we've got Dean, and we've got Kieran. They just experienced the London series. They've been to baseball games before. We went to them last year. Chris, first London series. We're going to go through everything that happened. There wasn't that much, so we decided let's do a fun little crazy episode here. Uh, just talking mostly about what the experience was rather than the games, because the games themselves... I mean, it was good. Games are fun. The Mets won. Yeah. That was good. That was fun. But also, at the same time, they played about 17 innings of bad baseball. If not all 18. Yeah. No, yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't a very clean series, but they somehow stole one away from the Phillies, which is great. Got Phillies fans frustrated, frustrated on Twitter. So we'll talk about that as well uh, and everything else that we normally do. So make sure you guys are following us on all our social media at uh, Mets Up on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. We're going to be giving some stuff away. We got a London Series t shirt. Size large. So we're going to give that away. Uh, leave a comment on the YouTube, subscribe, something like that. We'll pick somebody. And we also have a program that we're going to give away. So again, follow us on all our social media at Mets Up. Mets Up Podcast YouTube channel. You're watching it or you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google. Drop us a rating, drop us a review, download and subscribe. So James, yes. real quick for the people. This is your first London series. Oh, yeah. How did you think it was? I think they did a really good job in general. It's just first off, fucking crazy and cool to see how many people from the UK, not you guys, of course, actually love baseball and seem to legitimately live and die with the Mets. Had to shout out all of our UK friends and listeners that come and hang out with us. Graham, of course. The legend. Legend. Him and his cousin. Um, I got Kenny. Um, Darren. Darren, of course. Met Martin. Uh, Ian. There's some other... I can't... I'm sorry. Oh, Ollie. So Ollie today. Struggling to remember. But just crazy to see that how... I feel like, I figured this this game would be mostly tourists in attendance. Okay. Well, I don't even think it was close to that at all. And just the the pure like vigor for baseball that people in the UK have was shocking. Yes. Those those people, not people in general, those people. I, I want to hear what you guys have to say because you went to the London series last year when we went Cubs versus Cardinals, and this time, at least to me, it felt like there was a little more buzz, a little more hype, and I I feel like the stadium was more full. What do you guys think? No, oh, absolutely. Um, this year, I, I, not just the attendance, but it just felt like a better experience. Um, even weirdly, the games felt at a better pace. Yeah. Um, but in general, in the stadium, it felt louder this year. Um, I've got to say, big Phillies presence. Yeah, yeah it, it, a ton. Especially day one, it felt like they were they, they were the dominant in terms of crowd noise. Mm -hmm. um, but day two, Mets picked it up, not just off the field, on the field as well. And um, somehow pulled it out. But we'll talk about the game maybe a little bit later. Maybe a little bit. I even think that we got we got so much more of the Philly crowd noise day one. Because so day one, more. we were sitting on the third base side. And I think just there are more Phillies fans over there because we sat on the first base side for day two. So, like, seeing from the vantage point, there was just such a Philly collective right behind that Philly dugout on the third base side. So, we were kind of trapped in their, like, tidal wave of noise. Whereas... We were, on the, we were basically on what was more of the Mets side yeah, on, on Sunday. Yeah, on side, yeah. But it was still pretty split on that side, where the other side was mostly Philadelphia. And they're also, I mean, like, the elephant in the room, not even elephant in the room, everyone knows, like, they're playing so much better than us this yeah, year. Yeah, they're a it's much better team. much easier to convince a Philly fan right now with the best record in baseball to get on a plane and cross an ocean to spend a weekend or a long weekend in London. Or even spend money on the tickets. The tickets are low-key too expensive. Quite expensive. Now they did basically sell out, so I guess there's no reason for them to lower the price. The attendance last year was it felt much lower than it was this year, but the cheapest ticket was pretty much 90 pounds, I think, to get into the game, which is 60, 70, yeah. Yeah, pretty expensive for some seats that aren't necessarily bad, but they're pretty far away. I think that would be one thing I would change if I was MLB, but they're printing money, so, you know, fuck me. Yeah, and this was in a West Ham's football soccer stadium, so it was like a 55,000 person seating, and it was the first day was full, full, full. Sunday was less full. Saturday was much nicer weather. Six yeah. o'clock game versus a three o'clock game. But again, the fucking crowd was amazing. People were super into it. And they also had these cool little things they're doing inside the stadium, to, like explain baseball to people. Like there was a pinch hitter on Sunday. I think it was Vientos or it was, um, it was a, uh, David Dahl in Phillies with a home run. But it's, they like described what a pinch hitter is on the board, yeah. which is funny. They were like classifying players, not by position, but by infield versus outfield, I think, to make it easier too. That part was nice and very cool. All right, let me ask. Um, Chris, we'll get to you eventually. You're, you're a Yankee fan. We'll get to you. But Dean, as a English person, has this changed your opinion on baseball at all, watching these two games? Uh, I think I enjoyed parts of it. I think when the action's going, it's really good. Um, for me, I felt sometimes it was a bit slow. Yeah. I'm used to just nonstop, nonstop action. But uh, I'm coming around just... Uh, <laughs> Maybe going to slow it down on how many games I go to once a year. What, what do you mean you're used to nonstop action? Like, what's nonstop action for well, you? It's just like, you know, here we've got football and rugby. 
you're not taking as many breaks. It is just full, <laughs> full half, get to it, like get the point. Uh, here, it was almost just like, you know, we, we made a move. Now we've got to stop for a minute and yeah. chill out. It's too much restarting <laughs> for me. There's a lot of restarting. Rosie mentioned that too. The fact that like between every switch, there's like two and a half minutes where it's just whatever going on. And you guys made a lot of points about the theatrics of a baseball game in the ballpark and how to you guys it felt a little ridiculous, but that there was two minutes to kill between two and a half minutes to kill between every switch and they were dancing and singing and saying, and, let's get louder. I know yeah. like Kira was like, if they did this at a soccer game or football game, football match, football match, uh, they would like be getting booed. Like it's a little, <laughs> I guess, hokey. But also at the same time, like your guys' game is going on just continuous. And then you have halftime. Go get some beers. You guys can't drink beer, right, in your seats normally? Isn't that a thing? It depends on the stadium, but for the most part, no. Okay. Yeah, which was nice. I mean, the food was pretty good, yeah. I would say. I had, a, I had a completely okay burger. They super tried to Americanize yeah. the food that was there and a lot of it outside. Chris, I know you got sausage and peppers. Got to know what a sausage and peppers from England tastes like because... I honestly felt a little crazy. And before I even give Chris the mic, he got it on Saturday and he went back, doubled down, got it again on Sunday. So quick sausage and pepper, English sausage and pepper review for the people. Uh, it was way better than you would think it is. You can hold the mic too. You can okay. take <laughs> yeah. no, Where do no. I put my hands? Yeah. No, no, it was great. I actually really enjoyed it. A little beer and sausage and peppers at a ball game. You can't go wrong with it. And they did a pretty good job. You guys said the hot dogs last year weren't that good. No. So sausage, I saw... One guy, and it was look great. I'm going to give it a shot. And it was good enough to go back to play. So. Yeah, I mean, like, if you guys have the opportunity, London Series is great. The play was tough. Definitely, like, Dean, like you said, a little, a little slow at times. This wasn't necessarily the best series for the Mets, even though they somehow won a game completely gifted by the Phillies and that Miracle. rat fuck Jose Alvarado, which we'll, we'll get to in a second here. But I think just to talk about the first game, let's, yeah. let's go ahead and break that one down a little bit. Sean and I on the mound going up against Ranger Suarez. Ranger mm -hmm. Suarez still refuses to give up any runs, still pitching at a Cy Young caliber level. We know that's a, the water's going to even out at some point. It can't lie. It can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> but at the same time, the Mets offense was just so abysmal. It wasn't even that bad on Saturday because they got around after the first time through the order. Lindor put a couple nice balls in play. Either three or four hits. But home run would have been nice. Yeah, home run would have been great. Same for Pete. Home runs from either of those guys would have been amazing for us. But they each had three or four, I think they had five or six hits combined, mm. and Francisco Lindor scored a few runs himself, but the whole game just unraveled in one shot in what was the fourth inning, yeah. where Sean I unraveled, Mets defense unraveled, and the entire game totally fell apart on an insane Whit Merrifield home run, but before that happened, so frustrating. there was a, a pop-up in foul territory down the left field line where you guys, of course, all saw it, but Brandon Nimmo just like didn't get to one, and we've heard a lot about how crazy the turf was in these London games. We've seen last years past Originally 2019, when they had the crazy bouncy balls there, and the Yankees and Red Sox played like fake baseball. It was like yeah. 19 to 17. Like, they dude. didn't have the center field uh, higher either. They just had really? normal height, like 380 feet to center. Yeah, so that was bad. And then last year, there was one rambunctious game between the Cardinals and the Cubs that I think got out of hand, where another one was a pitcher's duel, which again was similar to this series. But the turf was crazy. It was definitely a point of emphasis, emphasis for players on both sides to not let the bounces like take over a game because the ball would hit that turf and they'd bounce straight high up in the air. So Play a few hours after Nimmo, then charge hard after a ball in foul territory. Song Marte doesn't go very hard after a ball that drops in front of <laughs> That's him. That's nice. That, uh, I mean, that Chris, is, Chris Boyd Mundo Sosa hit. I mean, saying that he didn't go after it very hard is like nice. He, he didn't run at all. He, no, he, he, was, he was a slow jog to that baseball. It seemed like one, he immediately off the bat was like, I'm not catching that. I'm not going to be able to make that play. It was so catchable. With, I think, one out and men on base, men in scoring position, just yeah. didn't seem like there was enough emphasis to go and get the ball. And then there was definitely a fear of the bounce because yep. he pulled up a few seconds, not a few seconds, but like a few beats before that ball dropped. And when it dropped, it went high up and over his head. So it seemed like that was something he was afraid of. And also, like, we know he has bad knees and a bad groin. He was out of the lineup to save face on Sunday. And then even he threw the Mets coaches under the bus for positioning yeah, him too that deep was in the gap. Bizarre. Which is horrible look. But flood gets open after that. Wood Merrifield hits a home run. The Phillies have a six run inning. Mets don't even get close to scoring six runs in this game. And that is kind of the end of it. Also, when that happened, like we were just dejected in the stadium and we, we had some fun on Friday night. So of I think course. everyone was a little bit tired that game in late general. Night, late night. And we got late night and we got to the game very early to go to the pub and have some, have some pints with some again, fellow Mets fans. But it just, everything went way, way, way down, like emotionally after that. And again, it felt like that was kind of echoed with the Mets and, we were trying to tweet and do things in the stadium. Service was back and forth. I had a tweet that went way too viral about the starting Martin oh, yeah. ball where I mistook a stat that said there was a 95% catch probability, but 
Fleet was doing way too well to take down at that point. And <laughs> Batty Biscuit was like a 70% catch probability. But so many people were jumping on that, just going crazy after stalling Marte, which I think is fair because he's been... The worst outfielder in baseball, yeah, especially it's, defensively. It's, it's I don't even think the close. the worst defensive outfielder in baseball this season. And this was just echoed that on top of it. And a guy like Sean Manai, who kind of always works the edges anyway, not... You need, you need to help him. Not as you help him, but like you get, everything needs to go well for this game to go well. He's facing Ranger Suarez with Manaya, and it did not go well. And no chance after that. Yeah, no, it was, a, it was a disaster. Super sucked. Really was like, oh, cool. I, I, spent, I spent all this money to come see the Mets get their ass beat in yeah, London. It's not like that because I like, know, this still I know. experience, still being in London, still London's a lot of fun. A, yeah, London's a great city, and the game itself was pretty cool. Even just like, not even just us spending a lot of money to do this. It felt like there was some points of lack of preparation, even for the stadium itself. We were listening to people talk about the fact that they were like broadcasting all this American food. And before the game began, about 20 minutes before, one of the stands said they were out of Philly cheesesteaks. Wait, really? Yes. And they were promoting like, there's the Philly section for food, there's the New York <laughs> section for food. The New York section had fried chicken, which is so not a New York not thing. Not a New York thing at yeah. all. There were people saying they were out of Philly cheesesteaks at the Philly section. They were just only serving nachos at that point. That's crazy. And That's then bad. Even, even the scoreboard for a while oh. was totally bosh, which is like a shame because. Again, this is like only happening once a year, and this is like the first time we're going to bring this sport to people in this country. One stat said that Starling Marte had 338 stolen bases last season. Yep. There was one that said Brand Nemo was hitting 171 with two home runs and four RBIs. I don't even know who that could have been. I don't know. Then, then they called him Alex Bohm at one point. Over a lot the last of Alex. Or two. I, I, I talked to Kieran. I said, do you guys have Alex over here? He said, no, it's Alex. There's no Alec. I thought there were plenty of Alex over here, no? No, just with an X. Really? No. There's no Alec with a C? Is it not common? Like, oh. so, that could have just been the accent then, taking it out. I, I'm thinking... Alex. 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 I don't know. I mean, uh, he, he made a great play you, in game two, so... Can you say Alec Bohm? Can I say it? Yeah, like, can you... Alec Bohm. Okay, yeah, so yeah, it's possible. You can say it. You can say it. Sure. Hey, I just don't. <laughs> yeah. And then there was a couple other ones where, like, things were cut off on the scoreboard. It was, it was weird. It was a strange, strange vibe of the scoreboard, but the rest of it was good, but that was weird moments. Yeah, I, it was cool. It was, it's definitely a good experience. I think it... Again, you don't have anything to base it off of. I do think this one was better than last year. Yeah. Last year, the lines for everything were also insane. And I feel like there was more people at these games than last year. So, like, the, the store lines were quicker. The food line, the bathroom line, even, like, the bars that we were hanging out in before the game, they were less crowded, but it didn't feel like it was empty. It just felt like they were more under control, which was really nice because, like you said, we had a late night on Friday night. So being able to sneak a table in there and, and sit down was really good. Yeah, and again, just the games were the game wasn't that fun. So that game not being fun kind of... Felt like it killed people's vibes. And there was like a weird guilt coming over, I think, Mark and I, just in general. Not even just Mark and I, but just like, I feel like Mets fans maybe, where we're exporting this sport to you guys, and like you don't have <laughs> yeah. that many opportunities to see it. And it was just a boring, dull game. I think there were only runs scored in three total innings of that game. Yeah. There's not a lot of action, not a lot of balls in play. Pretty painful, that first game on Saturday overall. Yeah, first one was tough. Second one was better, of course, because the Mets won. Uh, granted, it was a weird one because I think all six runs were scored on two relievers that did not get to finish the inning. Shout out to Chris for that stat. I believe nice. Gregory Soto came in, didn't even get an out, if that yeah. was correct, which dog water, that guy stinks. Phil's got runs off Quintana as well. Yeah, no, I'm talking about on the Mets side. Oh, okay, I'm yeah. on the Mets side. And then uh, Jose Alvarado, of course, the rat fuck, gave up all those runs in the ninth inning, blew the game completely, didn't get to finish the inning either. This is a funny one. So you guys went and took an Uber after the game, and I walked over to the train, just easier to get to where I was staying from there. And there was an English Philly fan, and he had created this song about Jose Alvarado after the game, like oh. a milk of like a football chant. Okay. And he was like, it was something about, I can't remember it now. Damn, I wish I could That's remember. It's tough it. to bring up that story. I know, and but not it was just it. funny because he was like standing there just <laughs> singing to no, like to everybody. He was totally by himself, clearly, visibly, like had a few pints, but just, he was like, and you filled he, something about like, this picture on the Phillies, and he like filled the Mets with runs. Okay. Something like that, back and forth. The fill with the fill. Well, he's a rat fuck. And yeah, I'm, it couldn't have happened to a better guy. Uh, could have happened to a better guy. But Jose Alvarado blowing the game was super nice, especially because Alec Bohm couldn't make the big play. Uh, good on you for stopping me from putting out that, that video about being like, Alec Bohm botched it because then he almost yeah, won the had game. an opportunity to win the game for the team, which yeah. would have been a bad look. But yeah, that game was definitely much better. I want to get your guys' opinion on, because we, we joked about, the exporting of baseball and yeah. you guys got to watch Sean Manaya and Jose Quintana pitch, which I don't, I don't know if you were able to tell the difference between the speeds or whatnot, but watching those guys pitch, were you impressed at all? Uh, I think watching them in general, it's, I, I'll, I will say this probably watching from afar. I probably couldn't tell. It wasn't until last year when we did the event in Trafalgar square, when we actually like were up close and personal with it, that you can actually see the difference because the amount of times, like I would say, I can hit those. That's easy. <laughs> um, but then actually being put in front of that is so much different. Um, 
so I will say it is impressive to see up close and personal. Uh, but again, as a non baseball fan, from the distance is a little a little tough. All right, Kieran, let's hear your opinion. What do you got on the game? Uh, it was mainly on the pitching comment you just made. Yeah, um, ma- 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 mainly on the on the pitching. Um, after watching it, I'm still convinced. Um, just for context, last year uh, we had a talk about pitching. Um, Mark reckons if a pro pitched at me 100 times, I couldn't hit the ball once. <laughs> I'm convinced I can hit the ball. I'm not saying I'm hitting it for a home run, but I'm going to hit that ball. And that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm going <laughs> to hit that ball. That's what Jose Quintana does to you. You watch that guy pitch, you think you can hit him. There's this a chance that here might be able to at least make some contact off Quintana, who was just horrible. Abysmal. Again. Can't every, wait for him to... Every single start this year. And it's just... It, he almost had no chance against Blaze Lion. They were licking their chops from the first Big inning. Big swings. Around him. And he did limit damage a lot, like kind of well. They only had, I think, three runs off him, but we had he was chased in the fourth inning. Again. And that, again, makes the Mets have to play his catch-up game and catch-up game and catch-up game with their relievers to where they keep leaving guys in too long. It happened to Daniel Nunez, who for some reason was left in for a th- third inning, a third up-down of the, the appearance, whatever. He came out a third time, gave a home, oh, pinch at home run to David Dahl, who, like, it sucks, but, like, it's fine that he pitched in that spot, but also, like, no reason he should start that inning because Jake Duke was ready to pitch. It happens again the ninth inning where Reed Garris to come in for what would have been a, like a revolution the third time he was out in the mound. And he just loses control because up to 30 pitches. That's not and what these guys are supposed to throw. Reed Garrett pitched in game one too, didn't he? I don't think he did. Or, I I guess, so. Okay, he didn't. All right, I thought he did. But he's thrown a lot of pitches. Same as Daniel Nunez has a lot of pitches. This Mets bullpen we know is short to begin with anyway. Yeah, and it seems like Adam Alvino was not available to pitch because he's been so bad. So bad. I don't even really know if we wanted him out there. But... It is frustrating. It was another one of like, we're catching up again. And I think I've noticed too, like Quintana again on the stat sheet, gave up maybe two, three earned runs, maybe like whatever that. it is. So Pull it's like up. not the worst and it will keep his ERA relatively low as to how he is talent wise as a pitcher. But being in a close game and keeping it tight like that also puts even more of a strain on your bullpen. The Mets just don't really have that uh, luxury. Luckily, with this crazy schedule, as we know from Francisco Lindor saying they've got too much time off when they got here. Mm. Uh, they're going to have a couple days off as well when they get back. So Yeah, but still, like you look back at the game and you're like, it's just, if he can get through the fourth inning, because he only strikes out one batter, he walks two of them. Danny Young comes in, cleans up the mess, gets Bryce Harper on. An amazing pitch. Danny Young's becoming actually a legitimate yeah. really pitcher. He's also, that's an English name if I've ever heard one. Danny Young. Danny Young's an English one. That, that's a big one, but it's just, it's painful. And he's out there mixing six pitches, like five pitches, and he still can't even get any good hitters out really it seems like at all ever and you're putting a guy like Daniel Nunez on the hook where he's throwing 27 pitches in this outing he's only thrown more than 20 pitches one time since he came back up and that was that double header game against the Dodgers that was just a game where they had to get through it and it, I think it was the second game where they were getting so, smoked yeah. yeah but it's just not a situation that you're going to be in it you want to put the guy in if you want him to succeed and that kind of keeps happening with this bullpen over and over again no but luckily uh, the Mets fought back yeah. I guess, yeah, give him a little fight. Right Brett, place, Beatty. Right time. Brett Beatty got a hit today, got to play, which I thought was kind of interesting that they started him, considering he's only on the team as the 27th man, and assumingly he's going to be sent right back down as soon as they get back to New York. So it felt weird that they gave him play, especially when Vienta's playing well. Didn't hate it because Beatty played well today, but it was it was bizarre. Luis Torrens has Legends. become the starting catcher for now. Yeah, No Tomas Nito in game two, which was interesting. That was the Tim Foyle hat moment by Mark on the last episode where we were kind of talking about who is going to be the catcher that gets sent down when Francisco Alvarez comes back up. I love all you guys looking at us now like we're speaking a legitimate different language. We'll get to them soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get to them know. soon. Neither just Tom, Tomas Nilo just probably has a slightly better chance, as a good point by Mark again, to get passed through waivers if he had to get outrighted because he's due guaranteed money on his contract. I don't think anybody else in the league besides the Mets wants to pay Tomas Nilo $2 million no. to play catcher. So you might as well possibly keep to rent because it seems like he just might have a little more pop. And even he had a big hit. On a, on Sunday, he also put the ball to the fence. Yeah, he also had a double in the gap in game one on Saturday. So it just seems like there might be a little bit more there. But really, just the rally just totally came down to nonsense from Jose Alvarado. Yeah, not being able to find the strike zone. Jeff McNeil getting a big hit. Had Which a few big needed hits. that. Yeah, he. There was a tweet that went viral too. It's probably my funniest. The funniest piece of content that came out of these two games where there was someone had a Belgian flag, but in the middle of it was a picture of Jeff McNeil. The bomb said. Jeff McNeil, Belgian fan club. Nice. Which, why Why is there a Jeff McNeil, Belgian fan club? But Love like, Jeff, but if there's yeah. got to be, what, her? Yeah. She's the only one in it, probably? Anyone, probably. That's also cool. Yeah. She's a one-woman fan club. Yeah, I mean, sounds like it's more of a problem than maybe a fan club, but... Yeah, yeah. but still a little bizarre. But again, got two hits, played well, turned some nice double plays, also booted the ball, but he still recovered the three hard-hit balls. 
and just you could feel kind of he had some energy that everyone was kind of happy that he was able to like let that off and actually feel good about himself playing. Yeah, because Jose Iglesias has been playing well. So uh, I think Jeff was asked before the game, I don't know if it was by our buddy Tim Healy or not, but about not playing. And he was like, I, there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, he's like, like, I, just I have to play better. I have to play better. So if that's what it takes, hopefully it is. Hopefully you can get Jeff right because he has been a very good player. We know this. And uh, that was big for him. But yeah, shout out Jose Alvarado for just completely Imploding. falling apart. It was awesome. He was wild. He had a batter, wild pitch. pitch. I uh, I know Look mad. talking to, to the Brits and Chris, they were like, this has got to be the lamest way ever to win a game. Yeah. Uh, how, like, what does that feel like watching essentially bad baseball, but then me and James are like jumping and screaming and high-fiving. <laughs> Is there anything equivalent to that, like in, in the soccer football world? Cool. Um, not really. Um, it's kind of hard when you don't have a direct comparison. I wouldn't say that we saw good baseball last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it's kind of good to see friends enjoying it. I kind of wanted the wind to come. Yeah. Um, as it came closer, um, I did think it was going to be bottled. I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't have any faith in that final inning, but um, no, I'm glad it got done for you guys. Well, you you use a word or a term to describe it that was a to it. No, but like, but even when the Mets won the game, but it was lucky. I don't remember what it was. Like in that top of the ninth inning. Use something, some term where like you basically like you play like shit, but you found a way to win. It housed it, maybe some. I don't know. Yeah, it could have been. I don't remember. It it it, it was fortunate. Yeah, I, I can't think of my exact words, but I, I would say shit housed that win. All right, I'll take I, that. I'll go with that. Yeah, Dean. <laughs> uh, kind of like you said, I think the biggest take for me was like you felt the atmosphere really raised towards the end. Yeah. Like suddenly the Mets like took the lead and like we had I, I saw Mark having a lot more hope than he did throughout <laughs> most of both nights. Um but then to win by what do the only way I could describe it is like being neck and neck in a sprint and all yeah. of a sudden you've walked to win the last the last yeah. bit. Like the other person trips. Exactly. And like there's so many opportunities where like the Mets probably could have really just dominated for the win and didn't. Um so that was probably like a little underwhelming for me. But you know it was nice to see you guys get riled up and yeah. probably actually see a win which is great. Chris, quick take from you on the end of that game, just more, even just like the environment in there, or just watching Mark and I kind of freak out for the last half hour. I thought it was pretty dope, actually, at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is 23, is a little younger than all of us, so <laughs> they're using the dope there, really. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah, you need to turn off some new lingo, and they got yeah. the British accent. I'll bring a little bit of the younger generational terms. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, the game was, the end, of the, the end of the game was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> No, the end of the game was pretty sick. I mean, I honestly think these guys aren't giving like the last play by the Mets, the double play to end the game. Good segue. I think, I think that was I think that was a pretty legit play, like end the game. I mean, they almost bottled it, but like at least had a big play to like get the job done. Yeah, so let's talk about that play at the end because shout out to Luis Torrens making a phenomenal play. Incredible. Dribbler Nick Cassiano Hero. shatters his bat. You guys asked me, did the ball just shatter? I was like, no, it was the bat. <laughs> the bat shattered. It was a weird break too. That's not one that we're pretty common with where it, it splices off like in 10 different pieces. But Torrens gets out behind the plate, catches it, wherewithal, bases loaded, step on home plate, throw the ball first, easy double play. Have you seen the Garrett Stubbs slide? I have seen the Garrett Stubbs. Okay. I was going to comment on that what's, next. What's your, what's your thought on it? I thought that was incredibly dirty. You thought and so? Fully done to in a way that was trying to, of course, break up the play, but like part of it, not injure Luis Torrens, but put him in a bad spot. So when we saw it at the game, yeah. I went, that's a good slide. That's a hard slide. I still, I think, lean towards that. I don't necessarily know if there was, like, I don't think there was any ill will outside of trying to flip him. But coming from a guy who is a catcher, Garrett Stubbs, who's a bit mouthy as well, I was surprised that he went as hard at Luis Torrens. Again, I don't think there was any any bad intentions. I don't I don't think it was a dirty slide. But that's like that's the borderline. The one thing I'll say is at least he slid that hard going into a guy wearing protective gear. Like yeah. he, he, also probably a moment where Tore uh, Stubbs came in as a pinch runner for JT Romuto after Reed Garrett just hit him with an 0-2 pitch and yeah. when the, we thought the game was totally going the other direction at that point, we thought we were about to bottle it as uh, everyone has been saying. Uh -oh. But so felt like kind of like he was trying to do something great. This was his only opportunity to do anything in this series, like in front of this many fans. And the <laughs> when that game was ending, the atmosphere in there was, like, was great. It was raucous. Like let's everybody go Mets. was on their seats. People were, let's go Mets, let's go Phillies, back and forth with each other, booing and cheering. But there was even a moment that I caught on Twitter after after the game that we didn't get to see on the field. I think we were just incensed and like happy and yeah. looking at it. But Lindor, Francisco Lindor, gets the third base line and just starts screaming at the Philly oh, dugout really? after that to get to back oh. up Luis Torrance. Also, a stupid thing I didn't that. I know that. 
if that slide would have happened at second base, oh yeah, that would have been a legal slide. Correct. He, everyone would have been ruled out, and the game went over. Like Reese and Hoskins. If there was a play at yes, if there was a play at home where he barrels over the catcher in a tag play, also everyone's ruled out, and yeah. that happens. But the fact that this is a weird situation where there was a force play at the plate when he was going to wield and throw the first. Stubbs basically had carte blanche to slide whoever he wanted. Definitely a loophole in Major League Baseball's rules, and crazy when they're so obsessed with protecting the fielders. They miss things. Yeah, and not, and like not allowing any bases or plate to be blocked, because Luis Torres was standing in front of home plate when Garrett Stubbs hooked him. And don't think, again, it was necessarily dirty with any malintent, but the situation, they definitely put a player at risk. And he might be injured, too. We don't even know right now. Yeah, we now. have no clue. I mean, they're flying back to New York right now, which that's a crazy quick turnaround. I'll say this, too. Because it was a force play, I'm sure Garrett Stubbs was really busting it and totally. being like, I have to beat him there. So I think that's why that slide could have appeared a little bit harder, too. Yeah. I hate backing up the Phillies here. I'd love to start the narrative of their like dirty fucking losers and all that. <laughs> but they're a really good baseball team. And I think this was just an unfortunate play that ended weird. I bet you, I'd love to hear what Luis Torrens has to say. Kieran yeah. and Dean, I'm, I'm sure you didn't get a clean look at it. But I want to see. We'll get your live reaction. I'll turn off the sound. What you okay what you think of this slide here. And you might not think anything of it, and that's fine, but watch the slide, and he flipped them. A red card. That's, that's the best I can give you. It'd probably be a red card. It, it, <laughs> it don't look good. I like that. I like that. Red card for Drew or, uh, Garrett Stubbs. Not Drew Stubbs. Well, also, it's, like, it's funny because there, there's not often plays in... I mean, there's never a play in football, soccer, where a play ends the game like this, where baseball is always a play that ends the game. Like yeah. Baseball's the only sport that's not timed. Like Something like that like, wouldn't even be a red card because the game's over. It's like, oh, you, you just got ejected, but there's no more games, so <clears throat> nothing really actually even happened there. I gotta say, I don't know what they do with the cameras at all these special games, but they're always way better yeah. than, like, all the game cameras. Like, these, these camera angles are pretty impressive. Also, very funny that for the international games, they put the sponsorships all over all the everything. helmets and everything, Zoom. which, why not then during the regular season either? I don't know. But also, there was a cool thing that happened after the game. We, don't, we didn't know this because we, weren't, we didn't watch any of these games television. We were at the no. park for both, but the English broadcast on TNT was absolutely incredible. The drama and the intrigue for the final play and the, the height and the weight of the call was amazing. Who who'd you guys say made that call? Fletcher? Darren Fletcher. Darren Fletcher. Darren who, Fletcher. He does the NFL games over here as well. But having that juxtaposed with Michael Kay was painful. It made me feel yeah. bad for everyone having to watch this game on ESPN. Ev everybody said the ESPN broadcast was despicable. It was uh, it was a bad broadcast. Michael okay, Kay was... I mean, we know he's a bad announcer. That's That's been known. He actually hates announcing. That's why he is so quiet during the Yankees games. Doesn't like talking at all. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we didn't have to watch this one. My dad was texting me all game. And maybe a little media marvels here because shout out the Mets for winning the game. We're done yeah. talking about that now. Buster Olney just casually dropping apparently on the broadcast that just accusing Edwin Diaz of using sticky stuff brilliantly mm -hmm. was his word. So taking yeah. a little bit of the English language there and saying that he brilliantly used sticky stuff in 2022. So that's part of the why he's struggling this year is because he hasn't had to make that adjustment yet, which... Such an asshole. Wh have you ever heard a commentator say that about a pitcher? Ever? Buster only famously has only ever live-tweeted two updates of players leaving the game with injury. And one was Robinson Cano in 2019 or 2018, and the other was Pete Alonso like two weeks ago. And now he's, he's an ass. accusing Edwin Diaz of using sticky stuff two years ago as well. Like, we're past that now. He might have. I have no clue. No idea. Pretty much every pitcher was. Are you going to say about every single pitcher then that struggles? Yeah, right. I mean, Tyron Walker was formerly a Met. He played in this game. Yeah. There's a good chance he was using this stuff. He Walker also Bueller's been struggling this yeah. year. He hasn't pitched since the sticky stuff got banned. We're just going to keep talking about guys in the name Walker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Love. Interesting. But even uh, even just to get more back to the ballpark, I don't want to give Buster all an even more shine than he's Nope, do, that's it. That was just our quick media just marvels. Just literally. He's just, just become a bad reporter at this point. He's just obsessed with the Mets for some reason. <laughs> So many weird jerseys are around the park in London. I think that's like a fun part of this. I've heard people talk about going to the NFL games over there that fans will just wear basically whatever apparel they can get their hands on mm -hmm. just to show like support. And even the London series of merchandise and things they were making, there are a lot of things that were shared Mets and Phillies logos, which if you're like commemorating the, sh the, the, the event, I get that. But just imagine like you guys, if there was a shirt that had like United and Liverpool's logo on it, do you think anybody in their right mind would ever buy something like that no it's kind of common over here as well like particularly football matches when there's a big game on half and half scarves are a big thing like actual supporters of the team they're not yeah. touching them of course. people who are just visiting for the first time that's where your market is for them but yeah it's it's a big no-no for actual fans over here it was crazy it was like even shocking to see but past that there were so many crazy cool jerseys that we saw around the ballpark yes uh jackson chorio yeah. Brewers one we just from the Mets perspective I saw a PJ Conlon one mm -hmm. which shout out PJ Conlon first ever Irish born major league baseball player really so, yeah it's a fun that, fact oh that actually actually make jersey makes 
That makes that jersey make tons of sense. I know, now. but that's also crazy. Yeah, but there's probably an Irish fan. Has to be an Irish, yeah. Irish fan. Although I met Irish fans last year, didn't know who he was. So okay. a little disappointed. Uh, what was another jersey that we saw? Corey Oswald. Corey Oswald. Jay Bruce. Yes. Troy Tulowitzki on the Blue Jays was another one I'm totally. remembering. Uh, Brandon Lau. Oh, yeah, that was a random one. A lot one. of Rays jerseys. Yeah, weirdly. A lot of Marlins jerseys. So many Miguel Cabrera, Marlins, and Venezuela jerseys. Two Andre Dawson jerseys. A lot of the Great Britain World Baseball Classic jerseys, yep. which is bizarre. Which I was is like, crazy. Well, that was one of the worst jerseys ever made. That was made by probably like a 16-year-old with a free trial of Photoshop. Um, a, bunch, a, lot, a lot of NFL apparel, which makes sense. We saw like a full-on Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes jersey at the yeah. game on Sunday. A Yaxel Rios that's, Phillies jersey. Oh, yeah, that's the winner. Number yeah. 53. A Carlos Ruiz Phillies jersey, which is truthfully big respect on that one. A Ricky Weeks Brewers jersey. A lot of Brewers. And it looked weathered, too. It looked Ooh. like someone made it out there. And then this was, I think, the craziest one I saw by far. Crazier than Yaxel Rios? A Kenley Jansen Red Sox All-Star Game jersey. Now nah, Yaxel Rios wins. I don't know. Yaxel Rios was nobody ever. Kenley Jansen Red Sox All-Star Game. It's, just, it's a bad jersey, yeah, but uh, Yaxel bizarre. Rios is on the Mets in the minor leagues right now. That was nutty. But... Still great environment there the whole time. Had a lot of fun. Still great environment. And just now, done with the London series. Going to do a quick preview of the next one, but again, chaos episode. Going to do closing statements for everybody here about experience this weekend, something they liked, something they didn't like, something really stupid, or something kind of fun. Good. 10, 20 seconds each, fellas. The thing I liked the most, I was most surprised about, was how well the stadium was set up. Like, it literally doesn't even look like it would be a football stadium. It literally looked like it was meant for baseball in there. And it was so packed, and I was surprised how, how crowded it was in there. But pleasant experience. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Sorry for cutting you off right there. Um, what what I was going to comment on, like one of the things I actually quite enjoyed, first of all, seeing you guys guys actually get a win. Nice. It's nice considering you don't seem to pitch well, bat well, <laughs> or even catch well, um, as we saw on day one. Um, but yeah, that aside, one of my favorite parts was actually asking you guys really stupid questions. Yeah. But uh, you guys seem to answer them nicely, so uh, that was nice. One of my weird questions. Why is the mound higher than the rest of the field? Um, so, yeah, I enjoyed it. Thanks. For, yeah. Nice to ex experience a win with you guys. Uh, I think my favorite thing was probably just the ending of that second game. Uh, I'd say both games felt a little bit boring for me. I was kind of falling off quite a bit. But then, <laughs> you know, the atmosphere, like all of a sudden, noticed some Mets fans there. I think that was the biggest thing was like going around. Mm -hmm. We expected probably more Mets fans uh, and the Phillies were a lot louder. But uh, that last half, uh, the Mets fans certainly woke up, and that certainly woke us up a bit, and yeah. enjoyed that a lot more. I couldn't believe they sold samosas in a baseball stadium. In the, like it had seeing Indian food in like a ballpark setting was shocking to me, and just nuts. And that was not what they brought in. That was yeah. part of the stadium. So mm -hmm. I guess West Ham likes their lamb samosas. Yeah, which I did not have. No, yeah. and also nice to see that like the Mets and Phillies each got to have like their own home feel at the ballpark like every guy got their own walk-up songs the team sent their own graphics that were playing on the scoreboards and also cool cool ass moment again we hate the phillies but having rob uh, mcelaney and caitlin olsen mac and d from always sunny and, and Wrexham united to be out there and like throw the first pitch but then like pull the first pitch back and instead mac got to turn a double play with chase, chase utley and bryce harper which if you guys like the show like there's so much there's so much meme ability with uh, mac and chase, Ut chase utley but Cool, how many like little things they were able to do like that that made this game a little like a little a little more elevated. Yeah, I, I definitely had a blast. It was weird to be at these games watching a team I cared about because the first year I didn't give a shit about the Cubs Cardinals game like yeah. at all. It was just like gonna show my friends, hang out. We only get to see each other once a year, like if we're lucky, because of course they live in England, I'm out in America. But cool to uh, have the Mets actually win a game over here. James, you are no longer the complete and utter jinx of I being on the still. same continent or even yeah. in the same country. Miraculously, one and one, but we're going to have to keep track of this as the year goes on, depending yeah. on how my travels end. Yeah, we'll see. On. We'll see how much you're out of the country again. But <laughs> next series here to wrap it up quickly for you guys, we got the Marlins. Uh, they suck. We know this. <laughs> Horrible. What are the pitching matchups, James? Although you're looking at my computer. Yeah, we got pitching matchups. Tyler McGill versus Jesus Lazardo. But I think Lazardo might be dealing with something. So, we'll, I mean, I'm sure if he's on there now, we'll yeah. see. He'll probably make that start. But that's Tuesday series. That's his Tuesday night start for the series. Mets got to travel back all the way to New York oh, and yeah. play with jet lag. Because we have the different times. I'm like 12, yeah, 10 a.m. Yeah. No. And then David Peterson versus Braxton Garrett, and the Marlins don't have a pitcher named yet for Thursday. Also a night game. Three night games this year. It's going to suck for us to podcast, but Luis Severino being the last mess pitcher this year. It's just this whole, it, watching these, these games in London, I really just wished we had an opportunity for you, like a Severino or a Christian Scott. Someone Christian with real, Scott would have been great. Someone with real velocity, someone with real teeth to pitch and like really show. Because Rainer Suarez is a great pitcher, but he's not a great pitcher in the way that he's like obviously a great pitcher, like we told you guys before. Like I really wish you guys could have seen like, Zach some, Wheeler. It's some real, like, 100-mile-an-hour shit. Like, just get see some pop. Because even, like, the, uh, the the baseball crickets uh, arguments were raging on this week. 
and the cricket fans were just it's a fake sport they were so proud the fact that they were able to bowl like 147 kilometers an hour which translates to 92 miles an hour in a uh, miles an hour which is not even close to the hardest pitch you'll see in a baseball game it'd be like a hard off speed pitch in a baseball game but one thing I really wish the Mets or Phillies would have been able to just line up and do. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, cricket's a fake sport. Baseball's way better. I'm glad the people in the UK loved it. 55,000 on Sunday, yeah. 53,000, almost 54,000 on Saturday. 100,000 people in London just watched the Mets and Phillies play. I don't think Major League Baseball or even either of these organizations it would have games. expected that two, three, four years ago, whatever it is. Definitely so not. I hope they keep doing it. Gives me an excuse to come out here and go on a bender with the boys. And uh, I've had a blast. And I think this is where we're going to wrap up the episode. Yeah, it feels great. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to everybody that came out and said hey to us yeah. this weekend. Sorry for the few people that like were in our DMs because, again, service was bad. We weren't really locked in our phones this weekend. We weren't able to meet up with, but hopefully we can eventually one day. Happy, great experience, and let's go Mets. Remember to follow us on all our social media, at Mets Up, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. We're doing some giveaways from some stuff we got here. We're going to happily give it to you guys, so just make sure you support us over there. If you're listening to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, drop us a rating, drop us a review, download and subscribe. Ooh, my voice is going. Malfunctioning. <laughs> Malfunctioning. YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mets Up Podcast. You guys have been killing it with the support on the YouTube videos. We really do appreciate it. That's like the way we make money, so that's awesome. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it. James, Twitter. Whether James underscore Shiano at Giraffe Nick Mark. Hey, Chris, what do you want to plug? Chris Kier 24. All right. Hey, and get then, Chris and follows. And then Kieran and Dean. I've got nothing to plug anymore. I'm retired, but Kieran SFF. <laughs> uh, better the same. Just happy to be here. <laughs> and that's it. Peace out. Peace out, guys. See you next time.